Hi guys, it's Chuang again. Thanks for dropping by my channel, which is all about doing business, investing wisely, and being the best person that you can be. So today I speak to someone called Jenny B. She's the founder and chief executive of Sydney Cake House. It's a nearly 40-year business. And she and her three daughters, are they really doing some amazing things with their business? And to be honest, I was completely blown away after talking to Jenny. And um, so I hope you will be as blown away by this interview uh, if you listen to it or, or see it on YouTube. And if you do, please like it, uh, share it, or comment below. Just tell me what you think. Thanks again for dropping by. Jenny B, Carmen B, Sydney <laughs> yes. Cake House. Uh, can I just say it's a big honor and a privilege to be talking to both of you. Most um, welcome. Thank you for inviting. That's right. Uh, at this point in time, when we record this, we don't yet know how you're going to do in the Ernst & Young um, Entrepreneur of the Year for Women category, but I'm sure you'll do very well. Uh, I think they have recognized that your accomplishments in the business world is quite fantastic. You're nearly 40 years in the business and uh, your humble beginnings in the business. If we can actually, uh, Jenny, can we just start at the start? Tell us how you began Sydney Cake House nearly 40 years ago. Wow, that is a long story. In 1982, <clears throat> actually it's my brother-in-law who saw the newspaper, you know, that there is this small little cake shop at Damansara Jaya there uh, for sale, all right? And this is run by a Hainanese. Three years he has been running at a loss. His son is an uh, accountant, but he's running at a loss. So my brother-in-law, the third one, that is my husband's brother, younger brother, the third, my husband is the eldest, he said that, hey, it's good. Why not we buy and then there is a transfer? Because in Batu, Batu Pahad, there is Ayi Itam, we have a brick, uh, I should say, small little factory. So he was thinking that, oh, it's good. I learned kick and I bring it back to Ayi Itam. And uh, bread bringing, but he doesn't know the KL not doing bread. Lah. But he only think of the kick going to Ayi Itam. So uh, he asked his brother-in-law, that means his sister husband, the one who is running the bread factory. Please come to KL, run this cake shop. And that side, they will just take over by the, you know, the, 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 the I think that is assistant. Then uh, I think my, my brother-in-law who came to uh, uh, KL, he couldn't uh, uh, get along with uh, the town life. He's not used to it. He found that, uh, you know, in Batu, uh, in uh, Aitam, if the boss don't go home, the workers cannot go home. But in KL, Damansara Jaya, if time's up, whether you want to go home or not, it's your decision, but I'm going to leave. So the workers just leave. So he couldn't uh, accept it and couldn't get along with town life. So finally, he told his brother-in-law, hey, look here, I want to go back to but, uh, this uh, Aigitam and uh, you get somebody to run this cake shop. And my brother-in-law, the third one, turned to me and said, that's how I'm the eldest man. Hey, can you help? You know, but me being the eldest uh, daughter-in-law uh, uh, and the Batu, Batu Pahad business, my husband had 50% share. I cannot turn back and tell him, hey, look here, this is your problem. You take care of it. <laughs> I'm here to chew. I'm a very conservative person. Uh? Uh, even I'm an uh, English educator, I'm very conservative, you know. So then I say, okay, I don't promise, I do my best. The first thing I did was, because I'm English educated, I look at the newspaper at that time, Malaysia don't even have a baking school, mm. all right? And the one who advertised over in, that time, if I'm not mistaken, it's Malay Mail, uh, not the star. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that there is this baking class in uh, Singapore by Smiling Orchid. So I went there without knowing a lot, but just going there to learn what is this. You know, I thought of learning a baking course, but instead they teach you how to make black forest cake. <laughs> and uh, I learned the black forest cake and I came back uh, and uh, I look at the business. I said, oh my goodness. Actually, we were some, doing some basic cakes, uh, sponge cake and butter cake for the schools and factories. 1982 or the 80s, that was our, at that time it's Dr. Mahathir, yes. uh, our Prime Minister. Still is Dr. Mahathir. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he, he, he actually was saying that, uh, look East, and at that time was the electronic era. 
where all the factories, a lot of factories come up. There is the Motorola, the Masushita, Western Digital, Harris Conductor. All these big companies are around with electronics and they have thousands of workers. So I supplied to their cafeteria. I was very happy that I got the chance that I supplied to their cafeterias and I supplied to the schools. So you agreed to take the challenge? Yes. yes. So you left your job. What were you doing at the time? A secretary. Oh. Actually, I was working as a secretary in a Japanese factory. So right. then you said, okay lah. Then when I explained yeah. to my boss, we are very hardworking. So my boss also understand and agreed because I also joined not long. And how old were you then? That time I was, uh, wow. Very young. <laughs> 30, early 30s lah. Early huh? 30s. Of course. Yeah. Early 30s. <laughs> early 30s. <laughs> married children yet, no? Yes, yes, yes. Married with Very big two. One and two. <laughs> oh, one okay. and two. The third one haven't. Mm. Okay, okay. The first and second is out already. Okay, mm. okay, okay. So then you said, okay lah. So then you, you decided yeah. to Yes, when I went in, in yeah? actually I, I, uh, I started early in the morning at three something. I left Komba with the van. I don't even go and uh, uh, get the license. I sort of uh, copy the license. <laughs> <laughs> and to get it fast. Things work so fast, so I got to drive the van. Mm -hmm. And then I send the products. Okay, the so you, you bake the cakes and then you send them from Gomba at 3.30 yeah. no, in the no, morning. No, no, no. From Gomba, I drive a car to Damansara Jaya. Mm -hmm. That's the shop. I load everything into the car, but in those days, you just see, uh, it's very, uh, I should say, the security-wise is good. Lah. Mm -hmm. There is no question that, hey, this lady driving a van, three something, you know, arriving, Damansara Jaya at that time don't even have KDU, you know. So I load in all the cakes and uh, 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 butter cakes and all these cakes, and then I start delivering to the schools. Wow, all by yourself. Uh, yeah, yes. all by myself. Wow. Yeah, to the schools and the factory, and I have to finish by 11 something. Now, if I deliver after 11 something, they won't accept because nobody is going to eat your things because yeah, not fresh, lunch yeah, time already, yeah, yeah. you see? So the next round is the tea time, mm -hmm. all right? So that's how actually I supply to the schools and factories. Then I tell myself, oh my, you know, it, it is really tough, you know? But one day, my husband was working Lee Rubber, his boss, Tan Sri Lee Bun actually told my husband, hey, look here, Chuang, I have a guest coming from uh, London with a wife. Can you ask Jenny to come and help me, you know, uh, to be the host? Then my husband told me, then I quickly that day delivered earlier, then I left and go back and take a bath, and then I joined them at um, this uh, Selangor club. And uh, when I reached Selangor club and I bring this lady, the English lady into the room, and seated and be seated before that, I saw there was this cake display as you enter the room, isn't it? As you enter the room, you see this cake cabinet display there, full of black forest cake. Wow. Then I quickly let her get seated and excuse myself saying that I go to the washroom. But actually I'm not. I went straight to the kitchen and looked for who is the head there. Then for just a very short while, they bring a masale to me. And um, the masale was telling me, you know, I, I was asking him, this cake is made by you or you actually buy from somebody? He said, oh, these are all outsourced. You see, masale talk uh, terms, outsourced. Then I said, oh, I see. Then I was very happy. Then I told him that actually I also produce this. You know, then he asked me, do you know what is a black forest? You know why? He was very upset with the present supplier because oh, it, the cake was not genuine, all right? It's a black forest, the look of it, but it's not genuine. But mine, I told him because I learned from Singapore, the sponge actually is soaked with the balls, kush, a fruit wine, you know, and then we use pitted, pitted black cherry. Oh, you seem to know what is a black forest. <laughs> yes. So he was very happy. And then in the end, down the road, not even a month, I was given the chance to supply. Imagine, 20 numbers of the cake I supply every day. Wow, 20 cakes. 28 dollars. Just imagine, uh, my van one day, my sales is only around 400 over dollars. Ringgit Malaysia. Yes, yeah, of course. That's the time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many years was it like that? Then no, 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 no. Once I did that, actually I was telling myself, I wanted to go to the supermarket. 
At that time, there is no supermarket. It was Emporium. Mm. Emporium is, if you can step into Selangor Emporium, you're somebody lah. Like those days, you can go into Cold Storage or Robinson, something like this. So when I went there, they don't entertain me. I sit there and waited and waited. So I tell myself, go to the next one. So I went to Campbell Emporium. So when I went to Campbell Emporium, I don't have to wait so long. Out came a gentleman, quite slim, Mr. Andy Wong. He asked me, then I tell him, I got this idea. Can I put a cake a display cabinet? Not a cake chiller, a normal cake a display only, and a warmer for my products. Because no one does that. I think it's good people come and shop and can buy home. That's what I think. And uh, he looked at it, he thought this was uh, oh, it's a new idea. You know, and I was happy that he accepted this new idea, but it takes time for him to bring up to his uh, 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 committee. And it's not easy because he couldn't find a place for me. After two, three months, finally, he said that he managed to, to, to talk to me because he told me to go under the escalator, which I do not want. I said, I'm in the food, not under the escalator because the dust, you know, is not right. People on top of the, the cabinet, not right, not right. So I said, Please give me this watch, please. And please move that watch over there. Then he said, <laughs> so he said, let me talk to them. And finally, he did that. He did move, uh, talk. But I tell you, it takes me nearly eight months just to ding dong, ding dong, finally tell me, okay, you can order your, your, your cabinet and come and display. Then after when he told me, okay, the next trip I go there, to confirm the place, everything, the timing to bring the cabinet. Mr. Wong no longer there. Because when I reached there, that guy told me Mr. Wong has left the company. And uh, I got a shock, but this guy was very good. I've forgotten his name. He just told me that, never mind. Andy had told me that you are coming in. You still have your place. So I told him when I'll start. So I, I, I told him the date and I shifted the cabinet in. All right, when I shift the cabinet in with the warmer, that cabinet cost me 4,005. Whoa. That 4,005 is 10 times my salary. And that cabinet, I designed in such a way, it's stainless steel, fully stainless steel. And there was this glass and the rack is a little bit slanted at an angle so that from afar you can see my product. And behind, I put a mirror. Just imagine, I've spent so much of time to design this, and nobody at that time would do a cabinet stainless steel. Everyone do it normally is glass and aluminum, not stainless steel. But I did that. So what, what did you think at the time? Some people say that um, entrepreneurs are not, not born, they are made, they are nurtured. But then it seems that you have come from a non-entrepreneurial background. I mean, you're a secretary, but then you're able to throw yourself in, have the courage to do so, work crazy hours, and then innovate on the fly. Why do you think that's the case? How do you think, why do you think you are like that? If you say that, uh, you're asking me, uh, why do I persevere? Okay, perseverance is one thing, but you'll be able to think about these things, to think about display, ah. think about uh, all these things, right? Things that nobody will want one thing and throwing ten times your salary on it to take the risk is another thing, right? I think this I should give the uh, the credit to my mother. Even how poor we are, my mom's tablecloth, the, the cloth that wipes the table is white color. My mom is a very disciplined person and uh, if we want to do certain things, the table must be clean. Not everything over the table. You know, and the tablecloth is white color. But till today, my house, the tablecloth wiping the table is white color. The, ta the cloth that wipes your feet is white color. My kitchen, 30 years ago, is white tiles. Wow. All right? So I think this, I give the credit to my mother that for food, it's cleanliness. Nothing but cleanliness. So for Jenny, the inspiration was the mother. For you, Carmen, Carmen, you're the eldest child of Jenny. <laughs> what was it like to... You know, most families, right, where it's business family, it's the father who's the entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, the tables are turning. It's your mom who's the entrepreneur. 
I mean, that must have been a real head spin for you. Uh, actually, I think just now the first question that you asked yeah. about Madam Jenny, how, why uh, do you think entrepreneur is made or yeah. well nurtured or what? I think most important is the characteristic, the personality. For Madam Jenny, her personality is whatever passed to her, she has to do it. And she makes sure she do it with hunger and 10%. So I think uh, me, myself, is very... When she started the business, I How old were you then? <laughs> I was always there. I think if I'm not wrong, I'm about standard three, four. Okay, so time. about what, yeah. six years old? No, no, Seven? No, actually, sorry. I think eight. I am uh, 1982. Two. Yes. 1982. 1984, I'm in Chui. So I was like 10? 10? Okay. Yeah, okay. 10. 10 years old? Yes. Okay. Yes. But 12, I'm in Form 1 already because I yeah. jumped Q. So yeah. that's why how I remember. So more or less, I was helping them in the business and I see how they digitize. Uh, I help them to key in all the invoice and everything. And then every time Motorola give a special order, you know, so we will jump in and start helping. So I think for her part, it's it's her. <laughs> for her part is the personality. So I think that is her. But for my side is, um, I think genetic. So since I out from school, yeah. I, I'm helping. So I see how to do business and everything. So when I come out, I'm in the uh, Sydney KL wing until I was 26. Uh, I at that time, I finished my CIMA. I finished my higher diploma in computer science. <laughs> so Computer after, science and yes, CIMA, yes, okay. <laughs> okay. So when I come out, uh, I have my husband. And in the entrepreneur way, I tried to grow the business and was quite okay. We grew until five countries. We have each country have our own studios and everything. So. And then from there, then there comes my husband injured and everything. So I've been traveling. Then Paris was telling me, you know, it's time for you to come back. And so happened there's a project on cash. And I think it's a Also, new... you're initially helping your husband in his own business? Yes, correct. I developed um, what, the business. What business was he doing? Uh, that was the ballroom dancing part. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. okay. Yes. So you are... teacher. <laughs> 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 so you are quite a um, well-known ballroom dancer. She's a yes. ballet dancer. <laughs> I oh, when I was young. Mm -hmm. I see. When Greek. I was young. So he built a business around ballroom dancing. Yes. yes and he got yes. injured? Yeah, correct. Uh, overused, so the knee was okay. injured. And now, because at the same time, he also liked photographer and everything. So now he also go into photography. Okay. So... Um, at some I, point then, you went back to the family business? Yes. So, 2013. I have my last event in uh, Vietnam. I was in Vietnam for six okay, months. Okay, so you're, you're organizing events around yes, the region? Yes, okay. yes. Uh, I bring in 12 countries to the countries. Uh, as you know, Vietnam is a communist country. So um, then I organize an the event there. It took me six months to deal with the government office and everything. So after that, so happened that it's a window lah in the company. So my parents were asking, hey, why don't you come back lah? This job also seven weeks a day, like you lah, so you can do whatever you want lah, so just go and try for it. So 23rd of August, I come back and visit. 24th, that become my baby. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Pass to you means yours. <laughs> so I think for myself, it's because um, I'm those that whoever passed to me, I will have to do it all out because I'm the eldest in my generation also. I have about 30 plus cousins, sisters. Brothers, so I have to set a very good example. So I do do my best. I just do my best. So um, I think entrepreneur is nurtured. Nurtured. Okay, yes. because every time you at dinner be time, good. you talk yes. about it, you talk about problem yes. solving. Right. Yes, because for myself, I don't even know how to cook. Uh, so I, I learn through mistakes, trial and error. Okay, okay. Of course, uh, with the patient and the backup of, you know, the HQ. So... It grows slowly. Mm -hmm. So this is unusual because your mom, Jenny, was your inspiration. You are the CEO, founder. Your daughters, you got three daughters all in the business. Mm -hmm. So it's very clearly a female-driven business. <laughs> Even though it's kind of like a female-ish yes, industry yes. of food mm -hmm. and, and cakes. But it's... Do you think that you're doing it in a certain way that if a man, of a male or, or, or guys had done it, it would be different? How are you approaching it from a from a all-woman management team? Is, is, there, is, is, is there a difference, do you think? Maybe more empathy, more communication, more more oh. care, more more detail. Do you think? I think the is, world is, is there, changing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the world is changing. So because it's very rare that you see a management team all women <laughs> one, and then family, then women. You know, it's very rare. <laughs> Why not, Jenny? Yeah. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. 
I think most important, uh, my three daughters, especially the first two, he saw me how I struggle in the business. That's why when uh, the opportunity comes, I say, hey, look here, we cannot put all the eggs in one basket. We should have our own small little cash retail. Now, I don't open shop, but I go a small way. Because when we go a small way, we learn it at a small step. And the capital involved is not that great. Yeah, because so, you are producing for other people, yes, right? Yes, Factories yes, yes. and, and yes, supermarkets yes, yes. and all that. Now, yeah. we, fact we, we, now we supply, we export. We actually supply to the airlines. All these are done by my second daughter, Nicole. Nicole actually is on the marketing and sales. It's the sales and marketing side. Now also the AMP. The third one, Christine, she's very good uh, in sort of system and identify uh, these uh, people's uh, talent. So she will be the one who will run the whole management and admin of the company. That means internally, you have to be strong, right? You're not only strong in the sales and marketing, you need to be strong in the company system also in order to support each other. So you're quite fortunate that each of your three daughters is quite talented in each particular field. That's what she said, right? nurture, you have ah. to nurture. So, so you son, you do this, mm -hmm. this one you do this. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But what were some of those early challenges? But this is challenge because when I said this, not necessarily they will follow. Follow or they 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 they, they agree with me. Okay. Because the elders, she's okay. So far because she run the cash business, she's more to her own. I just put in the capital, I just watch the money he spent within what is controlled in the company. She follow exactly our finance system. So she is still there. But the other two it's not so easy to, to agree with me because for me, I felt that because the youngest one is a pharmacist by profession. She's a master degree in pharmacy. And I told her that you look into the company, the production, this is our main bread and butter. So you have to be very strong. You have to be continuous improvement. You know, you have to watch out for talent. You have to uh, 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 train our our talent up, you know. Then the other one, the second one, Nicole, which is the sales and marketing, she's a very out, outgoing lady. Extroverted. Uh, yeah, yes, I correct. should say. Yeah, yeah. And then that is her strength. You know, wherever she go, I thank my, my, Maida, Madrid, uh, SME Corp, the government sector, she go, everybody also talk so much about her, praise mm -hmm. on her. Mm -hmm. The customer also praise on her. In fact, one of my, uh, I should say, same industry, quite same industry, you know, saw her the way she take eight bags to a German exhibition. She doesn't know that she's my daughter. She told me, hey, Jenny, if you do, really do not know how to appreciate this girl, hey, I want to tell you I'm going to take her and uh, propose her to join me. She even tell me that, you know, I got shocked, you know, and, and actually from that day onwards, I tell myself, whenever, whenever it's too far away, I will never allow her to travel alone. Okay, so, um, okay, we'll talk about your children later, but what were some of the earliest, the biggest challenges in the business? The, big, uh, the, the biggest challenge, I think, in uh, maybe in 80, uh, 90, 92. I think 92 is when uh, suddenly I have this uh, metal found a consumer eating my product and they found a metal in my product. Piece of metal? Yes. And uh, immediately this was brought up to the, to the hypermarket, a supermarket and uh, actually they called to inform me. Wow. So immediately I went straight away over to check the, 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 the product, the thing, the metal, and they are so kind for me to take the metal back after they took the photo. And I went back, immediately I can identify that metal is actually from the potato cutter. Mm -hmm. You know, the potato cube cutter, yeah. it is, must be a, a cube cutter so yes, that yes. you can, so it comes out from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually I apologize to them because it's a Japanese company and uh, even that, all my products are recalled 
and then I was taught to deliver for this particular product and uh, actually it affected my sales a lot. 20% of my sales get affected. I was not allowed to supply. So how did you come back after that? Uh, actually, I went back. I know this is the problem and I sit down with my staff. We actually went through how actually it occurred and then from there onwards, we started something like what you call now the HACCP system. You know, that means every day, any metal, we have to check, like the cutter. Morning when you do it, then after finishing cleaning up, you must check the cutter. Every time you use, you must check the cutter. We do it in that way. And also, later on, uh, later on, I bought a metal uh, detector. Wow, you know? okay, of course. And uh, the sincerity from what we have done, the Japanese was very touched because even if he were to look for others, the same thing might have happened. Yes. But most important, how you solve it. You know, that is most important. After eight months, and after the Japan, that guy flew one of their QC head from Japan, and the local chief manage, uh, bakery manager came to our factory, audit again, and then we are only allowed to supply back. Wow, huge. It That's might. huge, yeah. yeah. Because when you do the food business, health and safety is number one consideration. Yes, yes, yes. So then, uh, on to the children and to the succession plan, things like that, right? Of course, being a father myself, you tell the children to do one thing, they don't always follow, <laughs> right? This is a challenge. It's a challenge. How do you overcome that? Until today, it's still a challenge. <laughs> still learning. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> frankly speaking, uh, I think communication is very important. Uh, I, 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 one thing I'm very lucky is we are very conservative. The children somehow or rather, other than the business, uh, even how I make them, how mad they are. But once the, out of the business, uh, they still respect me as a mother. So I will just talk to them. You know that, oh, look here. I did it because you are my daughter. If you are not my daughter, I wouldn't have said this. And what I, why I want to do it? For example, the second one on the sales and marketing, the, the third one to be the CEO on the, uh, the, the admin and management. But the second one, I told her, you are also a CEO, but you are CEO on the sales and marketing. On the AMP, you are outside, you are the fighter. You need somebody very strong at the back to back you up. Food is very complicated. Very, very complicated. Every mixing can be different. Don't you think you need a sister which is very strong, who knows how to keep talent, how to retain talent, how to build up the talent, how to strategize? Don't you need a, someone like this? If she can run a company like this, producing our croissant, whenever we produce our croissant with that consistent quality, you just imagine, like now, if Milo, you see, no one can fight Milo. Why? Because they are consistently very careful on their quality. Huh? If you, I come to know them because I heard a lot of story on, on, on Nestle. The cocoa beans, they don't just simply buy cocoa beans. Way back so many years, they actually nurtured what strain they want or what what type they want. Mm -hmm. So you see, if you do your product in such a way, then isn't it very easy for you to sell? Because everyone will say, I want Machi croissant. I want Sydney Cake House croissant. Mm -hmm. You see, most important, can you do that? Most important, if I can do that, then it's so easy for, for him not to sell. He actually don't sell. He's actually helping people pain point. Because if you get a work, a, a skilled worker to do cross on, you know how much salary you have to pay, how much of headache you have to control. But if you can help him to help him the pain point, for example, nowadays a lot of people like to bake fresh. Not buy from you and then sell at the shop. Doesn't look fresh at all. So they want big fresh. But I come up with the technology of pre-proving, give it in the best quality, go to your shop, you just take out onto the tray, and then within that 
five to ten minutes, put it into your oven, the smell is everywhere. Who can tell you that this is not fresh? All right? I can do that with all the facility and the knowledge we have placed in. Now, there are another group of people who tell me, look here, we don't bother with fry oil to fry your curry puff. We did the test, the fried curry puff. We developed it so long, how to fry it properly and how not to, to make it so soggy. And today, we have developed the market right even to Australia. Pre-fried frozen curry puff. So from the child's perspective, mm -hmm. okay, uh, when you're growing up and then your mom talks to you this way or and then he, she tries to categorize, okay, you're the admin person, you're the creative person, you're the this person. How, how did you take to that? No, for how, me. Uh, ah. For me, is every time, uh, when I was young, my result is extremely good, uh, okay? Because with the both side, the elders in their category. <laughs> so <laughs> this one is, I always tell myself, I'm the Santa, Jiali Zui Da. Papa jia zui da, mama jia zui da. So I'm the oldest. <laughs> Both sides. Yes. Uh, like that la. Yes. So um, their standard is if you don't get hundred marks, you better don't come back. Wow. All right. Okay. So, tiger. Uh. Yes. So that is that time is tiger mother, but now become cat mother. Very very soft. <laughs> so the the chu chu chichi all very happy one. Okay. So uh, with this type of training, so um, I always have to do my best. But I'm very thankful that um, in my own uh, because now it's subsidiary already. Because I also fight for it. Lah, huh? So now it's subsidiary. So, so your own business. Lah. Yes. Okay. So they give very free hand. But certain things they still want to check. Of course, bottom line, you have to be positive. Lah. That is for sure. Uh, so then within that category, then I am more, uh, how to say, free hand to create my own. So of course, I have my own team of IT also. And recently, I have my own central kitchen. because, And also, we work very closely in the sense that for those 5,000 pieces or 3,000 pieces below or food catering, they don't do, HQ don't do, all will be our business. So you can see, we even though we are running a cash outlet business, but we also venture into all the training package, all the, you know, two, two snacks with lunch, breakfast, lunch, and tea time. Catering. We're also doing that. So, so we call it the meeting package. Correct. To do it. Yeah. So within families, there's things like sibling rivalry. Yeah. Oh, she get more. My yes. mother love her more than me. My mother love her more, me more than her. <laughs> I think this Would part that, no? is, for me, it's like this. Maybe because when I run the business with my husband, I always tell myself, business is business. The moment I can quarrel, but that moment switch away from business, I can be smiling already. How do you split? How do you separate life and personal? I work in personal. Mm. It's very tough. Yeah, right? I know. But throughout the years, because I'm the eldest, uh, so my parents always have this idea like, you are the eldest, you know. So if the sister not right, you have to tolerate, you have to guide lah. You know, the teach student, uh, you know, just like student not right, teacher wrong. So <laughs> better, the same <laughs> concept apply. So uh, when I come to this area, uh, what I can say is I didn't, I tried to do my best, okay. Of course, not the worst, but I always make sure that the sisters, we are very close. And even the husband, I'm so very close with them. So how do you avoid conflicts? Because avoid when you work together, huh? so usually, they, they, they we still have always, conflicts. Always, we still, we still will. Yes. Right? But we will slowly, la, when I will see, la, if the face is still black, so better don't talk. La. But sometimes, <laughs> you still have to use authority. Like sometimes, Nicole, very angry or what, they will say, okay, now I'm I have to tell you, why not do like this first? Then, Usually, that is the last resort. Uh. Because when I say like this, usually she will follow. But in the end of the day, I still have to take the opportunity and chances to explain to her why I want it to be done like this. But I think the trend was from young. Uh. So we can still do. I try not to use the last resort. But nowadays, can still there will be conflict. But I think it's, we still can sit down. We still manage to sit down as... And I always very firm is finished business means we are family, so we are still in good terms. Where was that in all this? Um, because obviously in the workplace, mom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Always mom, mom, mom. Where's that in all this? Oh, my father. Yes. Fantastic man. Yes. Um, he is the one that I always like this. Before I want to talk to my lady boss, <laughs> <laughs> I very seldom introduce her like my mom, in, especially in business. 
So before I want to talk to my lady boss, usually I will talk to my father. Because uh, my father is the backbone for all the backbone plan- planning for the whole group. Oh, so he doesn't... Yes. He's not in the business officially, but he's always yes, there. Yes, he's always there. He's the backbone plan- planning and all the IT is... All the IT, all the automation, he is the one who lead it. So usually come to the area is I will present to what I want to say to him. If I think he can buy the idea, then I eventually only talk to the lady boss. Okay, so he's the first line. Yes, yes. Because if... I do believe that if my logic way of doing things is correct then it's easier for me to sell it to my lady boss if my logic thinking is not there even my father also don't understand what I'm going to present then better don't go to yeah. the second level lah, huh? yes because if I go it will be like wasting your time and also you know it's, it's not the correct way and I'm very thankful that because my younger sister is staying next door okay <laughs> so uh, sometimes I will just talk to her you know if she can understand means the, the project show can sell so uh, and she's very supportive also. She always tell me, oh, should be no problem, I'll go ahead, you know? So, yeah. So if she is the CEO of the HQ of Sydney Key House, no problem for me. Nicole is very good on uh, marketing. That one, no doubt. Yeah. Nobody can fight with her. Yeah. That one is a strong point. So we just have to do more, how to say, the collaboration part where three of us, it's time to more sitting down instead of everyone doing everyone's job and then, you know, try to communicate very less. Now is the time, because company is scaling up now. Yeah. So it's the time where we really have to sit down, talk, right or wrong, talk it out. Then we will settle. And this can be, I think is practicing starting not long ago. But it's coming up, especially when lady boss try to step down slowly. So this is where the three of us have to really go into it because Jenny, before that never mind uh, we will anything uh, we will talk hey, you know lady boss this one like this like this you know can you help <laughs> so she will she become the she will juggle everything so, yeah mm. I, I want to ask you Jenny because I'm always amazed when I come across someone who is very successful in business and then also have a very successful family life because it's so difficult to do just to be a parent and be a parent by itself is so hard and then to run a business and do it well is all so, so hard. It's like a double whammy hard, right? <laughs> I look at your daughters. All of them are independent. They are smart. They are capable. They are also amazing uh, children. How the <laughs> hell you, did you do you it? Your... How the hell did you do it? I think the, the starting of the business, actually, that plays a very important part. When Actually, when I start my business, uh, I, uh, the second one was about going to school. So I told her, please, I took her to a shop. Uh, that time I studied Dale Carnegie, I think. Uh, Dale then Carnegie. I took her to a shop. I said, you go and choose which uh, alarm clock you want. Those times don't have Mickey Mouse or what. No, no, no. It's only red color is very special. So she chose one red color and said, ah, I like this alarm clock. I said, okay, from now onwards, I bought this clock for you. This clock is going to wake you up. And what you do with your cheche, there are three cups there. I put in the Milo, I cover it with the plate. Then I don't want her to boil the water because they are still young. So I took a thermos put there. So from the thermos, those times don't have water heater, nothing one. So you can pour <laughs> the thermos. And then after that, the dad will send them to the kindergarten and all this. This one is already standard tree. Then I actually left the house at three or something so they don't see me one. You see, so I Three something in the morning. The, yeah. What time you go to bed? I Late go to bed around 11. Mm. Wow. And then yeah, later on, when I started 7 11, even at night, I have to mend the telephone because mm. my van are delivering. Sometimes they have problem. They call me. I'm the person who run everything. How do you get any sleep? <laughs> you don't bro- sleep, lah. <laughs> my brother in law or my relative, I never like to come to my house to stay. Yeah, I stay in your house. Uh, uh, sometimes at night, your telephone rings, I cannot sleep anymore. <laughs> yeah, because every night the telephone rings all of us. <laughs> Very hard, ah. Huh? Not the driver problem, van problem is fine. You know, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. were very well. When raining, ah, yeah, pray hard, don't rain, lah. You know, after the person yeah. deliver, we have problem. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think I hard. think this is very important. That makes them very independent. Mm. So you know? give them responsibilities. But, but obviously, like at those times, I should say, uh, those times during that time, there is no no nothing called. Um, 
child abuse. <laughs> you don't use that word. I use this word. I heard this word when the third one growing up. She says she will she will lodge a report to child abuse about the mother <laughs> about the mother. Yeah, I learned from her. All right, child abuse. Then at those times also don't have oh we lost the childhood time with the children. We don't have these terms, you know. I really don't grow up with the children. I have no time with the children. So now when they grow old, uh, why now I become a cat? It's because they're telling me all their childhood funny things that happen. How they see the tiger coming back. If ever the tiger come back early, what did they do and what did they hide and how they 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 they. Do you know uh, how my result is so good? I can't even watch TV until I'm eighteen years old. Wow! I don't even have a TV for them. <laughs> So, so you gotta study lah, study, study, yeah, study. Yeah, it's every time study, and uh, you know, uh, your result must be so good. And how I earn my first pay is because my result is so good, then I get the angpao from you know because of the good result. That's and, a reward. Yes, yeah. yes, and and the first, you know, the standard one, two, three. That time very good result. Then my parents only bring me to bookshop to shop for hundred dollars. Oh, that time very big already, very happy already. So I buy all the xiao ting tang, uh, all those, you know, that time only can read. So that's, that, I think that is, that's how we remember. Wow. Uh, I still so, remember. So uh, very um, strong parental Only when the influence. young one born, the life change. <laughs> the, the tiger no the more. The tiger la. become the tiger sister. <laughs> uh, that is me to her. <laughs> that's why she, so that you, took, you took the pressure. <laughs> la, yeah, because the time lady boss said, hey, I'm very big, I'm very old already, so the, the youngest one, I give her already to take care, okay? Because she's still working, then she said, you have to take care. So she go kindergarten, I bring her first day of school, you know, secondary school, where then the first boyfriend, can boyfriend, you know, so uh, Tatia say yes, then you're okay. La. So, you know, I have to set the rule. So that's how we get to very close also. <laughs> uh, and then um, succession planning lah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know you, you have now three adult children. You're gonna pass on to them. How do you choose your CEO? I think you've chosen the youngest person, yes, right? Yes. So, so that okay. So better explain, okay? <laughs> <laughs> As I explained just now, when I choose the youngest to be the CEO, my second daughter actually, um, I think I'm going against the tide, isn't it? Because the second one joined me in 1994, I think. Once she, she finished, she's also a very brilliant girl. Mm-hmm. Because normally people take two years to finish a, a computer degree. But she finished off by one and a half year. Mm-hmm. So that's, the, that's why she got a trip to go to Australia to be graduated there. Mm-hmm. And we follow with her. And we follow her. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, that the second one actually is very intelligent. She's also very intelligent. And uh, so the, the second one actually joined me in 1994. First. Yes. And 10 years, she was writing this software and doing all funny things for me. Uh. She can also write letter for me. I will tell her, at those days, la, I'll write quotation. Please, write for me the quotation. I will charge this one, then you will do it for me. I don't have proper clock. So she will do all this at home for me. You know, and uh, she, until 2005, one of my salespeople, which has been with me, you know, just because $100, he just leave, you know. So I got a shock uh, after training so much because of $100. Obviously, there must be some heartache with him, like he don't yeah. want to tell me, yeah, you yeah. see. But I got a shock, you see. Then the father told Chris, uh, so Nico, the father. Nico, I think it's high time you don't always stay at home. All right, because every day is at your home. Uh, he also go out with friends. Uh. So he said, time to go and help your mother. Go and help in the safe. So she came. And uh, I still remember I was still uh, doing this macro. All right. 2005, I, I'm, do, I'm selling to macro. And uh, actually when I started with macro, it's also a very funny story. And... Uh, this uh, Nico, at that time, I was around 40 over 1,000 a month. Nico came within three months. Uh, he built a business to 120,000 within three months. Triple. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he, she was very good. She was very focused. And she can really get along with the customer, I can tell you. All right? And then uh, that makes me feel, wow, 
you know, I got this girl, you know, and and she. The same one who lugged up the bank yes, in the Germany, right? right? Yeah. 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 Then your competitor said, "Hey, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah." <laughs> yes, yeah, correct. My that competitor the, called me and that's tell the me, "Lady, mm. Nicole." <laughs> wow, you're uh, very lucky. Then, uh, because you see, she should be the CEO of the company, right? Because she's joined me so long now. Now I'm going against the tide. I put the youngest one to be the CEO of the company. So I know she's a bit sad. All right, but she maybe she don't want to say out. In our family, la, she just don't want to say out. But she's sad. I can see. So I told her, don't think a CEO is the top. She is CEO for the internal. All right? You need the company to be strong. You are the CEO on the sales. All right? You have to work together. You know? Then the company only be strong. Somehow or rather, now she can understand because she also faces a lot of problem in the sales itself. Let alone if she were to run. The, the back, yeah. It's not easy. In the manufacturing line, that is, I should say, uh, 70%. 60 to 70 percent of your energy is there. Sales marketing. Yes. Yeah. Then that is the sales and marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know how there's, um, there's a saying among Chinese uh, that um, three generations, right? So, first generation is the founder, the most energetic, hungry. Yes. Second generation, still involved in the business. Third will waste, right? Third will waste. Uh. How are you going to avoid that for you guys? Because you can still feed it, uh, right? You, were, you started very early in the business. But then your children, because because it's already established, right? How do you keep the hunger? That's why in the company, although these three are my children, uh, I also uh, very important is human talent. So you see, our our company have a lot of managers. We also want to bring up this talent. That's why for the legacy, I want to leave to them, and I want them to remember it so that the company will continuous grow all right first the spirit of entrepreneurship all right always most important what is the spirit of entrepreneurship what is that actually that is whatever you say profit is number one if the company don't make profit don't talk don't talk anything look into what is do what is happening you are not making the profit so profit is number one. So you have to make profit. And that's why you look into your, your colleague when they are the human talent, we are training them. We are, our accounting system also very strong. We also try to measure each department. How well do they fare? You see? So I said the spirit of entrepreneurship is in Sydney. Number one is you must make sure every uh, uh, department actually earn money. If they don't earn money or their, their labor cost is high, we will zoom down. How? Why? You know? We, we are very, very strict on that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very strict on that. Number two is continuous improvement. You will never end. Today I'm saying something, probably tomorrow you have to change something. So the, the continuous improvement, that sort of uh, spirit has been in the company. That's why we have a, one of the earliest to be talking about green technology when, when Pam even don't even have the standard for, for light industry like us. I went and approached them and get that uh, 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 cert, uh, cert, you know, and then they start to have all these to measure yeah. us. Now, we are also one of the earliest to go into industry 4.0. So you can see that we actually always look into continuous improvement. And of course, now the word sustainability. Those days, uh, we, we don't even have a word KPI. Our company philosophy, 37 years ago, encompasses everything like this. Number one, the company provides an environment for each and every one of us, including myself, to work. First, to have everybody have your own work to make this company move forward. You work, you learn. Whatever you work at your place, you will learn. You will learn the good, the bad, the fast, the slow. You will learn a lot of things. But when you learn, did you put into practice? When you know it's good, did you put into practice? Very good example. If you know to be punctual, did you put into practice? Many people, 
Uh, they learn. This is good. But they never. You know, they try to find a lot of excuse. Oh, jam, la, this, that. Uh, so, did you put into uh, 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 practice. So, if you put into practice, automatically, human is such. Not everything we do is right. I myself, who tell me I'm wrong? My P and L will tell me I've done wrong. Nobody will tell you I'm wrong. If they got the guts, they sometimes they don't even tell you. You know? So, the most important thing is you work, you learn, you put into practice. If you put into practice very funny, you will somehow outshine. You will be the shining star. Somehow or other, people will come to you. People notice you are very good. Second philosophy will come because we worry that I overlook this human talent. Those times don't have human talent, this word. These people which have ability, you know. So what we did was the second philosophy comes in. We try to measure each and every one of you. Sales can, uh, can measure each and every one. But what about if I produce a bread? I can't be mixing, doing myself and make a bread. You make a bread, I make a bread. No. So we measure the department. So I don't have a word KPI at that time. I don't know how to coin this word. I say we try to measure each and every one. And if we can't, we will measure in the department. Mm -hmm. And Never. your salary is earned by yourself. You see, I started, the, I took over the business after three months. I just started to measure. If your department, we, at that time, I don't have department yet. I say if the sales break 17,000, huh, I get 10% of the extra sales and I give divide by all of us. At that time, I already started that. No bakery will ever do that. Bakery, even the white loaf, Federal Bakery, Sunshine Cold Storage, they all packed with the wax paper. So if Modi, you can't see. When I started my white bread, straight away in Damansara Jaya, I packed in a, in a, a plastic transparent bag. Two things. First, I don't have money to buy the wax paper. It's more expensive. You must have volume. Secondly, I use a transparent bag. I tell people that you can see if it is moldy, don't buy. People go all the way to Damansara Jaya to look for me. I want to buy your bread because I have confidence. And my bread, I still remember the bag. The first bag I printed later on is a basket of rolls, rolls, bread rolls. And I copy it from a book. <laughs> What do you think drives you the most, uh, Jenny? Because it's, it's quite astounding talking to you. Uh. Seriously, I've been, I've been speechless for the most part of the hour. What do you think drives you? I think most important, I'm that type of people, kiasu, kiasi. Uh. All right? Because when I started the business, um, my husband colleague uh, uh, used to buy bread, you know, from 7-Eleven. And all 7-Eleven, I worked with 7-Eleven from day one, that Mr. Andy Wong, right? I actually worked with 7-Eleven, even I said that the closed door, open door policy, I was invited mm -hmm. to discuss. And one of the 7-Eleven official opening was done by me. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I worked with them so closely. All right, so the, my husband colleague used to go there and buy bread. So one day he found that the bread was actually produced by me. He stopped buying. You see, they know you. They feel that you are a secretary. You are not a bakery. So they stopped buying. That drives me even harder. I must prove myself. I'm that type of people. When I learned shorthand to be a secretary, my, my children grown, that was the time the children was even about. younger. Huh? And I learned secretary. I still remember the Indian teacher. I've forgotten is Kuma or what is his name. I've forgotten. Very common name. He told the 22 st uh, uh, students, every one of you have a chance to pass the, pass the L London Chamber of Commerce private secretary. LCCI. Uh, LCCI, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And he said that uh, the only person very difficult is Jenny. First, I left school more than 10 years. Secondly, I have these children with me. So, he said that it hurts me so much. Wow. I go back home, I Proof tell my home. husband. Mm. I told my husband, I said, you look after the children. 
if there is any function, I will not joining you for one year. Wow. I told him. The determination of your he's mom. He's a factory is manager. You know, he's a factory manager. I said, I'm not going to attend. I'm going to write this shorthand because my hand is hardened. I cannot write. And secretary, everything is talking about shorthand. Very right? fast. That's right, fast. So, yeah. you see how to pass that exam with 100 words a minute. Very difficult, isn't it? I left school yeah. 10 years already and I've been doing all funny things, uh, even mini marker, running a mini marker. You just imagine how I write. So what I did was, I had a good strategy. Because Pittman's uh, exam, uh, you can start with first 50 words. Mm. Yeah, but you got to pay in pound. Uh. You know, I've forgotten, don't know, 30 pound or 20 pound. Uh. You go and sit for the exam, 50 words. 60 words, 70 words, 80 words. I go for every exam. So I get used to that. You pressure. Know, you know, pressure and also the recording sound. You know when it record, the boss is a recorder. Ma, so you got to take all the notes and then you got to type it out. And then that is your, uh, you know, either it's a letter or assignment. So I did that. And I did it because at that time my husband is working, I still got money. Those young students, they think that they are young girls, so they did not sit for the exam. So, come the exam, I went, I understand, I still remember he was talking, ordering all the winter clothing. Uh. So, I still remember I did everything. I'm the only one who passed the class. Uh. Wow. Yes. And the, the <laughs> but but the 22nd, 22 of them, at the end of when we exam that time, it's only left 15. Uh. Somehow or rather, they did drop, drop, drop until 15, uh, 14 to 15. So they did not pass. It's because they suddenly have that pressure and the voice recording, I think, that kills a lot of people. You know, them, you know, because later on, I talked to them. How come you feel? You all have been very good. Then he said, is the fear, the, the, the suddenly the panic. And everything if, if, you, if you had to describe your mom, Jenny B, in one word, right, <laughs> um, Carmen, what would it be? Determination. Determination, I yes. think so. Same for me, I think yes. determination. Just determine. Push all the way. Of course, of yes. course. I can tell you, I just because of a uh, cabinet, I cried so hard. You can imagine I got other things to cry. <laughs> cry or not? Where did you get your but energy from? I cried tonight until the, the, the cows come home. But tomorrow, you will never know. Yeah. Where did you get the determination from? Mm, I think it's born. As I born told you, <laughs> I just don't want to lose out. I'm that just type of to people. work hard. Yeah, yeah. If you don't do it, don't do it. If yeah. you go into it, Swipe. do the best. Actually, yeah. the best. I think Chinese, Chinese, uh, all the years, thousands of years. That's why I agree with Paul. I agree Paul Jambu Yes, yeah. I agree with him. What did he, he say about the Chinese? He said the Chinese are thousand years has gone through famines, have gone through a lot of uh, illness, have gone through a lot of farming and all this, has been struggling all the way, all the, all the life, you know. So when they come here, they are so poor, you know. So what do they have? All they have is energy. Mm -hmm. and time and they work their way up they, if they can save they save if they can work they just keep on working mm. and that's how they earn their money robert croc said the same thing yes. in his biography yes. right remember yeah. yes 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 robert right. croc said the yeah. same thing and he said that yeah. southeast asia has been built on the back of the chinese diaspora yes yes correct <laughs> it's true it's true indonesia thailand malaysia that's why a lot of people don't like don't like him <laughs> <laughs> he speaks his mind so what's next for you what's next for the both of you and the company? For myself, is I still continue to grow as the outlet now because um, even though my outlet is very small, but my outlet, there's a few ways to grow. Of course, uh, to get talent is very hard. So we also come up with a smart box project where everything is, you order yourself. Yeah. We deliver, we put there with the temperature. So you take out using pin. Everything is paid for. Everything is delivered. Technology? Everything is keep warm. Yes. Technology? Yes. Yeah. That's why I have my own team of AI, IT, learn Fantastic. from HQ. Less so labor, we went, less yes, humans, correct. more technology. Correct. So we try to do all the... So you can see the combination is... Uh, the back end is strong, where the factory is also IoT, uh, you know, industrial 4.0, and then the uh, IT, I think they are, they are doing all the all-round in the admin also. But in yeah. our place is... POS, uh, click with the front end, or the grab pathway, 
all the grab pay, boost pay, all that we already synchronized, even though my company is very small. And Learning to be bigger. <laughs> and what's next for Charmaine, uh, for, for Jenny B? <laughs> Actually, for me, most important, the company, we want to grow stronger and stronger. We wanted to have uh, the halal mm -hmm. export uh, um, in our, all our products. And you just imagine, I'm, I'm combining our croissant, which is, you know, when I export a croissant, those masale will be laughing off their head because I'm exporting to them a product <laughs> where it is their, their product. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So what, how should I do it? So I make it differently. When you eat my product, you are eating a East Midwest. Mm -hmm. So when you eat the, the croissant, you have a feeling of the Eastern feeling. So you are eating two in one. Huh? And I'm sure a lot of Asian market in those masala countries, they are very happy to buy it because they are recalling all the memories eating all these products. Jenny, I'm, I'm proud to say <laughs> that, um, that you are one of the few people that have rendered me speechless. And I can say that I'm proud to have met you and talked to you because I'm really, really inspired by your energy, your, your determination. I mean, incredible. It's yes. just incredible story. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank for, you for your encouragement. Thank you for coming on. Thank, thank you, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.